here's an example prologue program. You'll notice that comments start with a percent symbol and every line is terminated with a period. So in our code, our variables are going to start with an uppercase letter. So you can see here, price is a variable, symbol is a variable. And atoms start with a lowercase letter. So you can see here we have some atoms. We also have some strings and some integer literals in our code. So this particular prologue program, or actually we call it a, a database, this particular database tracks some facts about different stocks. So we have the stock symbol, the name of the company, and its price at whatever time I created this file. Then we have rules, and the rules let us use the symbol to get the price or the name of the stock, and you see those down here. This underscore you see, that's what's called an anonymous variable, and that tells Prolog that we don't care about that particular value in that rule. So here we're returning the symbol and the price, so the only thing from the stock fact we care about is the symbol and the name and the price. So before we can do anything with our program, we first need to load the database into memory. So this is SWI Prolog. That's the compiler or the program we'll be using to run our Prolog code. There's a couple different ways that we can load the file, and we call that consulting in Prolog. So I can select consult from the file menu, navigate to where the file is, and then open it. And you'll see that that says the file's compiled. It gives me some stuff. It says that there's 12 clauses. That lines up with the number of facts and rules I have in that database. So to use the database, there's a couple things I can do. So I can type stock x, y, z, and then a period. And that's what's called a query. x, y, and z are variables. And when I press enter, Prolog is going to give me values for those variables. So it says there's a stock fact in my database where ETP is the stock symbol. The name is Energy Transfer Partners LP. And the stock price is $15.93. Now, it's presenting this as an option. I can either say I like that option by saying, by pressing Y or enter. When I do that, then I return back to the prompt. But I can also get additional responses by pressing either N for no or pressing the space bar. And you see each time I do that, I get additional values for that fact. And I can continue doing this and eventually it runs out of facts. I can also use a rule and I'll get the same values. That's the price rule. And there, when I had the unknown action, I hit A to abort. I could also say name IHRT and give it the variable name price there, and it'll tell me the price is whatever. Actually, I use the name there. So even though I use the name price, that's just a variable name. So you can see here I use the name rule. So I got the name. What I want to do is use the price rule. And there I get the price. I can also check to see something more complex. Like I can say, give me all the stocks where the price, and I use a comma to say or essentially, and I say price is greater than, and I'll do 35 with a period. So there we have JPM, BAB, ABGO. Those all have prices greater than 35. Now, what if I asked what the price was for Google? It says false. Now, Google does have a stock price as of me recording this video and probably at this, when you're hearing it as well. However, it says false. And the reason is I don't have a fact in my database for Google's stock price. So in Prolog, there's this idea called the closed world assumption. 
And essentially that means Prolog thinks that all truth in the universe is contained in the database. So anything that's not provable from the database is false. So you can imagine eventually we're going to do some pretty mean things asking it facts that seem to be true and they won't be. So you, another thing you want to be careful of is misspelling. So if I say price SJN, I get false. And the reason is, even though I meant to ask SJM, since I misspelled it, it's wrong. Also keep in mind these variable names don't have meaning to themselves. They're just variables. So just like before, when I typed price using the name rule, I got a price equals the name of the company. So this is a quick introduction to Prolog, and we'll do a lot more in, in future videos.